once again we are blessed to come together in the name that is above every name the name Jesus Christ he has kept us safe protected us he has provided for us he has been good to us a week is past and here we have entered into a brand new week and as people we can do nothing else than to come together to express our praise our thanksgiving our appreciation uh, to honor him wherever we are as his people we thank God that once again you are joining us and that we are able to do so God has been good to you good to your family I believe so and that today having gotten this time we want to go before him by thanking him let us pray father we are thankful to you this morning for this is another day given to us you have blessed us you are the one that has taken us through the beginning of the year till now with all that we have to go through in life Lord, we appreciate your sad goodness, for there is none other God, no other God like you, our God. You are the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the merciful God, the gracious God, the everlasting one. And as gathered this morning, we want to say thank you. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my brother and my sister's life. I thank you for our families. I thank you for the things that you have done for us. And today you have made it possible that we can come and to celebrate your sad goodness we thank you indeed we thank you for the fact that your presence is here with us by the leading of the holy spirit holy spirit we acknowledge your presence and we look forward to your leadership your direction your guidance your empowerment that you will impact our lives as we praise the name of the lord as we express our worship unto god as we open our hearts to hear the word of god that today will be another wonderful day that our lives would grow from one level of maturity to the other. We thank you so much for everything. May your name forever be glorified. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sure you said amen to that. <laughs> Certainly, uh, we are here once again, and that we will rejoice in the name of the Lord our God and bless his holy name as we already have said in our prayer. But today, before we do another thing, we want to pray. We want to pray regarding what you and I very much aware of taking place in our world. Uh, we had this pandemic, this coronavirus pandemic that has been for some time now, and we know how many people have lost their lives, and uh, many have suffered, you know, losing their loved ones. And then again, we are having this issue to do with uh, racism, uh, with this issue to do with inequality. Uh, so much has been going on that there have been people certainly seeing the need to protest uh, to make their voice be heard that we will be able to live in peace together i mean the world has to be such and uh, we know that it's not what it is but certainly christians we don't want to say nothing can be done we want to go before our god because some of us have actually uh, been affected by this some people have gone through serious racism serious attack inequality some of us certain positions and leadership that we should have been we have never been given so there's been a lot of issues that have gone on regarding this and today uh, unfortunately it's turning to other things because there's been also the issue of routes and uh, counter if you like uh, 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 anti-racism to these things but we are believers we are we are people that follow christ and uh, we know there's one thing we can do and that is to pray so i want you and i to go before god in prayer let us present this issue before God. God has answers to all this. Uh, we don't know what to do. In fact, many times leaders don't know what to do. Uh, they, we may think they can do, they can settle these things overnight, but no, it takes the power of God. And Christians, as we are, we should be handling those things. So let us go before God and pray. Let's pray lifting this issue of racism, inequality, division, uh, all that has been going on that has never uh, seen that love Christ wants us all to have. You know in the world that we are living in the idea of you are black i'm green i'm yellow i'm white it shouldn't be the case and those things are even happening in the church sad to say and so what do we do so let us pray i want you and i to agree the bible talks about this uh, the fact that the effect of heaven prayer of a righteous man availed much so let us today stand in agreement and then bring uh, this issue before god believe don't just uh, say something because we are suggesting so believe that your prayer my prayer this very day can make such a change wherever it need to be. Maybe in your locality, uh, in your community, uh, it, it could even be your church. 
and then it could be the, the nation that you are in. Today, it's again happening all over the world. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O Lord, that today, once again, we can come to you with the privilege given to us as your sons, as your daughters, as your children to say, you know, that we can present whatever be the concern of our lives, whatever is taking place in the world that we know it's not acceptable. It's not what God, you expect to take place and you want to take place, but that you have given us the privilege to deal with these things in prayer. We know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And that we stand today and pray that the issue of racism, the issue of division, inequality, all that is taking place in our world. Lord, oh God, we pray that it be brought into a place, oh God, of understanding among men. That there is an, issue, there's an under, there's a need for us to know that we need not fight each other, but rather we need to live side by side in peace. Heavenly Father, we pray that wherever there is this confusion and there is this uh, fight and there is this racism and there is this uh, things going on, we bring it under the subjection, the authority, the power of God, that there will be peace, there will be peace, there will be peace, that there will be joy, there will be understanding, there will be this uh, equality, there will be everything that is needed, wherever it is. Father, we are thanking you, Lord, that the time that we have now presented to you, knowing that it is your will that we will live, you know, with one another in peace and joy, that it shall come to be so, O oh God, in our lives. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the fact that you hear us any time that we call upon you. We are grateful to you, even in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you be all the glory, to you be all the praise, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Anyway, we don't want to see this as the end of that prayer. Let us see it as an activating uh, aspect of our lives to continue praying on this things until we see those things, you know, really change. You know, it's not about the noise many people have to make. It's about what God is able to do. I'm talking about praying to deal with this issue. Hallelujah. Let's read the scripture and then we will get our hearts, you know, in place to exalt the name of the Lord in song. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 43. I'm sure you have heard about it. I'm reading the one and two. It says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In fact, let's add a trick. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. You know, you can go on and on, but certainly as God will speak through his prophet Isaiah, you know, as of the people of Israel, understanding who God is to them, and the fact that he is this their God, and he is this their Lord, and that he have these good in intentions or good plans, you know, regarding their lives. I believe the same way it is to you, the child of God. God has not saved us to leave us on our own, to go through the suffering of life. God has saved us and has all uh, that he has, you know, set in place for our peace and for our good, even for our joy. And here, when we read the scripture, it's an encouragement to the people uh, of Israel. And again, you can put your name there, you know, as you see Jacob, you know, obviously, which will, which will refer to as the people of Israel. He said, do not fear. I don't know what could be the issue of your life today that perhaps you are afraid of. We have been dealing with this issue for a while now. You know, do not fear for I have redeemed you. So think now about that. Wherever it is in life, sometimes we are okay. And other days, certain things make us be afraid of certain things. But we don't need to be afraid at any point in time at all. Why? Because we can trust the word of the Lord. Because we can believe what God has said. You know, the 2 Timothy 1, 7 scripture that we have not been given the spirit of fear. You know, so we can hold on to the word of God and believe that what God has to say is certainly what it is. So if today we are having the word of God to admonish us, I encourage you, whatever it is in your life that you might be going through. I mean, uh, come tomorrow, especially in the UK, uh, many of the uh, businesses have been encouraged to open. You know, and people are going to get out there and then only to find out that it is not as easy and it's not going to be easy as you know things should be it's not going to be normal at all but you know what do we get do we afraid no we got to place our other faith in god so when you read that scripture do not 
fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. God says that we are his. Certainly, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, in fact, when we didn't even know the Lord, he loves us. Can you imagine? And now that we have given our lives to him, then he, we are his. Then he thinks well of us. Then his plans for us that he has declared to be good are there to manifest in our lives. And so you can hold on to that word of God and have such a hope in him. No matter what it is, just continue to interact with God and enjoy the fact that God is faithful to fulfill the very things he has said he will do. Now look at what it says there. He says that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I mean, many times people pray, pray like that. God, don't let me go through this. But, I mean, God allowed us sometimes to go through certain things and just to prove himself faithful to us, to make us know the fact that he is there with us. And I want you to see the fact that, you know, he will be with you no matter, you know, where you find yourself. Whether in the waters, uh, whether what may seem to be uh, fire, you know, this is all kind of a metaphor, a way of uh, describing maybe your situation of life. Must know that, you must know that, he is with you. Hallelujah. So today be strengthened by this word of exhortation and to know that the God who has saved you, he is with you. Hallelujah. And I want to go into that very place to express our appreciation uh, in terms of song uh, to the glory of his holy name. Express your thanks. I declare these lyrics. I mean, you, you, you find it. Some of you will get it online as we sing and uh, and do so as your worship. Do so as your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I won't go back. Go back. Can't go back. To the way it used to be. For your presence came and changed. Somebody say, I won't go back. I won't go back. Can't go back. To the way it used to be. For your change me anyway that's what the lord god has come to do in your life in my life and certainly if god has come to save you as you gave your life to him and you have made him to be the lord of your life there's no way to turn to something else nothing no power no person nothing should come and take that place of god in your life for whatsoever we thank god yes for another day god has made possible for us and i want to use this time once again to welcome you all every Kingdom Life family member and every Kingdom Life family member all over the world, we want to welcome you. We thank God for these days that God has given us the privilege that we are able to come together every Sunday like this, you know, to open our hearts to the word of the Lord, to have that privilege of exalting and magnifying His holy name. So thank God for your life and I pray that all is well with you. Yes. And we're going to be looking into the Word of God as we will always love to do. I mean, we have been touching on the subject uh, regarding the authentic believer, how we as believers of Christ are supposed to be living. And when this lockdown took place, you know, we understood that we cannot just live anyhow. There was a need for us rather for any uh, sense of uh, being worried and being afraid and going down you know, and uh, not living the life to the maximum of the level of maturity God wants us to be. Uh, you know, there was a need for us to rather come to that point than to, you know, be victims of what maybe the circumstances or the issue of what we are in, you know, could bring to us. So we're looking into how we are supposed to live our lives. And we have come to the point of where we say it's important to value the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful. We've learned that 
in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is living and powerful. If you look at that scripture, you can see, you know, what Bible say in that respect. We also look at to the scripture of 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, making us understand that all scriptures, you know, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, you know, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. And when we talk about the man of God, we're talking about simply you, the child of God. You know, I believe, yes, it was said uh, in this respect, but you, the man of God, you, the woman of God, you, that person of God, as you open up to God's word, and as you look at it and know that it is the word of God, it is God's spoken word, it has that power to bring what this kind of transformation, this aspect of what profiting, benefiting you, and the aspect of doctrine, uh, for correction, uh, obviously reproof, and then instruction in righteousness. So we hope as we have been looking at this, it is doing you some kind of good and you have not forgotten about it. And it's in that same direction that we have been looking into, not just the importance, but also the benefits, the benefit. But before we came to that, we look at a very important scripture, which I love so much in Second Peter 1. Obviously, there's every word of God is powerful and must be loved. But here, you have to say that for his divine power has, has he bestowed unto us. Now, when you look into the Amplified Version, it's interesting how you put it. It says, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through, uh, through and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. So when you read this scripture, certainly has to assure you and give you some form of encouragement that everything that you need to live this godly life, this life that is placed in the sight of God, God has, by his divine power, provided. He has given unto us. So there's no lack in God. Whatever we may be going through at this point of time, there's no lack. There's every answer. I keep saying there's every solution, every answer to every experience of negativity that we may go through in life. As you only open, as you only open the word of God, you see it is the case. So yes, we can see how important the word of God, and we can see how the word of God is so beneficial even to us in all this respect. And the first uh, benefit that we touched on last was to do with salvation. We read about salvation. And again, I want us to just quickly be reminded of what we can look at all the scriptures we had looked at so far. But then again, you know, we understood that, I mean, if it's not for the word of God, we would not have known Jesus Christ to be the son of God. We would not have known that he's the one that was to be born or was born eventually through uh, uh, the, the, the Virgin Mary. You know, and to come to this earth and to go through all that was actually pr pr prophesied long before even his birth, and was going to go through the death, and was going to do all these to save us mankind. We would not have heard this word of God if not for the word of God, if not for us coming to you know understand what scriptures have to say. So we see how important and beneficial the word of God had enabled us, and that's on that basis where Paul even had to declare that the word of God, you know, is that you know gives him that kind of a. A uh, 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 reason to declare and to and to preach it as it is. So here in this in this we look at to this scripture, and I want to read. It says in verse uh, twenty three of First Peter. Let's read First Peter one twenty three. That was the first benefit we touched on, and I've just picked one verse that we have touched on to look and to move on to what we have for today. First Peter one twenty three, according to the Amplified Version, it says, "Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves." For a sincere love of the believers. See that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. For you have been born again, that is, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose, not of seed which is perishable but from that which is imperishable and immoral, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. So here the scripture makes us to understand the fact that we are born again, not by the perishable, but rather the imperishable, which is referring to basically, that said, yeah, I like the way that uh, Amplified put the living and everlasting word of God. So again, we can see here the benefits of the word of God, where we can source salvation from. And it is from the word of God. So today, you know what it means, you know, to be called a born again believer. And you come to that because of what you heard, you know, because of what has been preached. 
If somebody witnessed to you, I'm sure he did it so uh, with, that, with the understanding of what the word of God has to say or to declare or teach. You know, certainly in whatever it might have come to you. He came to know that Jesus Christ is the one that has been given, you know, uh, to us for our salvation. And then we came to look at to the other benefit, which is faith. How we can gain faith. You know, we look into the word of God and as we do so on a daily basis, on a regular basis, we figure out, you know, how our faith can what, grow. And so Romans chapter 10 verse 17, another familiar scripture which we looked at last time, that says that, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So again, if anybody, even now that you're in Christ Jesus, you know, you know, as you do, as you look for to see your faith grow, we keep saying it all the time. The way for which you are able to build your faith and keep on trusting God and to hold on to Him, holding, having the hope that even when it seems as if things are not happening right, you know, God is faithful to His word. It's when you get to the word of God. You know, your faith is going to grow because you are reading the word of God. Because you are reading about what some people have gone through trusting and believing Him. What they did. You, you read historical. You read accounts. You read things that are actually taking place when people walk in total obedience. And that makes your faith what? Grow. Not just in a day. And I keep saying that. Anytime we're talking about the issue of the word of God, it's not just reading a day and forgetting it when you think you needed it that most. But it's all the time. All the time. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. You know, actually emphasize in that aspect of we meditating upon the word of God day and night. So again, that is another benefit we have looked at. Today we are looking into uh, the benefit of the word of God for our growth, for our growth, for our growth. I repeat, the benefit of the word of God for our growth. Now we're talking about growth, certainly we are talking about in this very case, spiritual growth. Not necessarily physical growth, but spiritual growth. But it's, I think it seems, I think it might reflect on your physical growth as well because... I mean, the, 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 that we spoke about physical exercise and stuff like that in the Word of God. So we are going to look at that today. And I hope it's going to encourage you and to strengthen you. And it's going to move you from where you are to a, a, a level where you have not been yet. Because you know what? When we became Christians, we, we were born as infants. We were born babes, as the Bible puts it. We were born as kids, children. You know, but we don't stay infants. We don't stay as a child. We stay as grown ups, you know, we and we stay infants growing, developing and become mature. And the only way we are able to come to that place of maturity is when we are faith. You know, when we are faith. By what? By the word of God. It's Matthew chapter four, verse four, where Jesus had to face uh well what well, does face when did Satan uh, tried to tempt or tempted uh, Jesus our Lord and Savior, he, he referred to him well, in Matthew chapter four verse four, the man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded or cometh from the mouth of God. And that tells you the aspect of the fact that the word of God is important. It's as saying basically that you can only live uh, by the word of God. Just as in the normal, uh, you know, physical realm of our lives, you know, we are able to live and grow and then and become matured by the very good uh, food that we are fed uh, by. So it's necessary that we understand that the word of God has all this benefit for us. If you are a child of God, you should not stay a child. I mean, what I mean, you are you are you have been a, a person of Christ. You should not stay a child. You know, unfortunately, we have today so many believers. They believe in God, right? But they are in the church and they have not grown. They have not grown. They are the same. You know, for twenty-five years and nothing has changed in their lives. You know, they are the same. You know, not understanding certain things at a point of their lives meant to be teaching others. They don't. They are still crawling. You know, they still, you know, and it isn't the way our, 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 we have been called with Christ and us of the life that we are supposed to live or to be. So I encourage you that you, 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 will, you will, as we look into the scripture, you know, begin to see that importance and then look at to how your life is supposed to be mature. Because that is it. That is what is required. A believer life is supposed to be mature. Now let's look at some scriptures here as to the point we are looking at now. Let's look at the first one in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 and see what God has to tell us in that respect of the subject that we are looking at today. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 and it reads, I mean it says like newborn babes crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the lord is good 
Now, as newborn babes, you should do what we are told that we should what? Crave. I mean, I can look at to other translation. Like uh, the English Standard Version says this. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. Now, if you look at to the order for which we are tackling this subject, we will talk about what salvation. And from salvation, we're talking about building your faith. And then from faith, now we're talking about developing. I don't know what you are see. You see the progress that we are trying to work along with. So you have been saved, yes. By the grace of God, you have opened up according to Romans chapter 10. With your heart, you believe, and with your mouth, confession was made. At the point when you realize, according to John 3:16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, <laughs> but have a valid life. And you did believe that word of God, and so you you know, receive him into your heart. You gave your life to him. You became a child of God. You became a child of God. You didn't have to pay money for that. You didn't have to do something extraordinary. All you did was you repented. You know, you realized the fact that you were a sinner and there were things you were doing. You may be doing good things at that point in time, but then you knew that they were not still that good as Christ or God's word, you know, actually put it in understanding of what is good, pleasing him. You know, so when you gave your life to Christ, you know, you begin to what? You know, build faith in Him. It is the faith that you have, which is need needful for us, we say, to be developed. You know, that faith that you have, which you have in your heart, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, which needs to be developed. So that every day of your life, the things you face in your life, you can continue to hold on to Him, trust in Him, and believe Him. Not to allow those things to, you know, move you to the left or to the right, to make you doubt God, but to know that His will is. And we keep saying that it's so as you want, trust in the Word of God. So when you have gotten to that point of your time, you are a child of God, you need to grow. And I know that, well, for many of us, we are not necessarily that kind of people. We are talking to people, I believe most of us, or maybe all of us, and if you're hearing this for the first time, obviously this is where you would have to come through. You know, when you accept this Christ into your heart, yes, you're going to grow. Like any other person, when we are, you look at the human analogy of life, when a child is born, a babe, you know, you don't give him bones. You don't force bones on him because you think it's so necessary for the child to grow. What we do is we feed the child with milk. It's necessary what the child can, you know, is able to take in. You know, all the necessary nutrients within, you know, to make him grow and mature to that point where now he doesn't need the milk anymore but to grow on solid what is spiritual, the Bible of God, solid food, keep to it. So in the same way, that's how our life is supposed to be. You're a Christian, you have to understand this. It's very necessary. Because for many people, they don't see this, and it doesn't matter to them for them to develop their lives. And that's why, unfortunately, today, so many of us Christians, you know, all they are doing is keep on asking, asking God. It's as if all that we know about our relationship with God is about what? Asking God for blessings. Asking God for blessings. No. We, we have been saved. We have been saved, but we have been saved as born-again believers to grow from this infancy place. Now, as I said here, and I read that very translation, it says, like newborn infants, when you are born again at that point, you are as what? Newborn infant. And there was the need for you to what? To be fed. To be fed with what? Pure milk. You know, pure milk is actually a reference to what the word of God is for a young Christian, a young believer. Pure milk. That by it you may grow up into salvation. It is true this. So there's this process. Having received Christ in your early days, young as you are, as in this case, a babe, you know, to be fed. For some people, even as they come to know the Lord, and the moment they, they do receive Him into that, they think that is all. That is all. You know, they don't need anything anymore. No. The life that we have been called is a life of development. I'm sure you're going to get more to know what we are talking about here. So please, take note of it that you are not supposed to settle. If you are a born-again Christian today, don't settle there. There is the Word of God there available to you to benefit you, to, to help you grow spiritually, to help you grow and develop. And to go to mature things you know as you grow you're able to do things and again when i talk about growth this thing comes to mind you know because you know that we're only able to come to a point of our productivity when we have grown like any other tree you know like any other plant you know when you put a seed in the ground and it germinates maybe tomatoes or whatnot or corn you know that thing has what it dies it's reborn if you like and then it begins to take up the stem it grows and then when it's mature, it produces what? Fruit. When it stays there, you know, little as that, it never grows. It's not going to be productive. It's not going to be fruitful. And that is the life we have been called to. So you are not a Christian just to be asking God for, bless me, bless me. You're a Christian for you to be fruitful. 
But to come to the place of fruitfulness, obviously, would have required that what you have what been fed, you have been you have been you have been fed with not just milk from the infancy, but you are growing through that development process, and you have been fed with solid food. There are things we are supposed to be learning every day as a as a husband. You're supposed to know what the Bible is teaching in regard to you know going to marriage and that way you're supposed to relate to your wife. As a father, you're supposed to know these things. These are things that we are supposed to you know uh, feed on in the Word of God in you know, order to enable us. And you know, in the day, you got to dwell on it. And you got to, as you do it, you see that every day there's a lot, a lot, you know, being unraveling before you. So I hope you are taking note of the need for us to grow and why the word of God is vital in this very case. Hallelujah. And I hope I'm challenging you and obviously myself as to the fact that we don't stay where we are supposed, uh, we maybe we are. We're supposed to be growing. We're supposed to be growing. In fact, we talk about the, 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 the five-four ministry gift according to Ephesians chapter 4. The gift that God has given to the body of Christ. It's all to do with what? Equipping the saints. Equipping the saints for what? For maturity. You know, so even as a pastor, or we who call ourselves pastors, something we don't have to lose sight of and should remember is that as we obviously go and 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 and, and preach the gospel, or as we preach the gospel and we see men become uh, born again or become children of the God, we should remember that they are not to stay where they had to uh, the, the very infant of their life. We are supposed to understand that there has to be the resource, there has to be the food, spiritual food that has to be available for them. And so I say this to you, and I hope you obviously being with us, you are not necessarily a victim of sight. Because if you are in any church where they don't teach the word of God, they don't preach the word of God in order for you to grow, hearing it to help you to know what is truth of God, in order to help you avoid the things God expects you to avoid. And in order to, you know, make you keep or adhere to things you are supposed to obey, you know, in that respect, then you've got to be careful and to consider exactly where you stand and in that very place. Because we need the Word of God. Hallelujah. We need the Word of God. So growth is necessary in our development of the relationship that we have in Christ Jesus. I want to say that. Growth is necessary. Our spiritual growth, let's qualify with that. Our spiritual growth is necessary. Today, you've got to be even looking at yourself. And I don't want to say this to condemn yourself or to feel bad about it, but I always use this uh, in, in, as you have been hearing us for a while now. Always coming to the aspect of evaluation. Evaluation. If if you are not going to be, if I'll put the other way, if you evaluate your life, you're able to see how what the level of your growth that or the progress you're making in your life of development. So for me, every time I see the importance of evaluating my life, and it can be done in certain, uh, certain well, your own uh, what you consider to be any sense of proper uh, period of assessment, you know, but in a daily basis, you can even look at it. How have you been reading the Word of God for your life of development? What is the Word of God saying to you? How is it changing you? How is it transforming you? How is it affecting your relationship with your spouse? How is it affecting the way you are raising your children? How is it affecting your love, you know, for your neighbor, you know, as God has taught us in, this, in the Word of God? Are you learning something? Are you growing? You know, there are so many things that when we came to know, when we came to know the Lord in our early days, we never understood. We didn't understand. And yes, it is the case, like any baby. When a baby is born, they don't know many things. If you leave a child there, he's going to touch and that's fine. He's going to touch it. But while the child is growing and understanding things, the child realizes that he cannot get close to fire. So in our childhood, in the things of God, there are many things we didn't understand. There are certain things we did. There are certain prayers we prayed, we offered. You know, there's so many things we have done. And by the mercy and grace of God, God has kept us through. But as we're growing, it's expected that we understand the truth of God, the corresponding, you know, truth of God as of making our lives what come to that place, showing forth the glory of God. So I say this to encourage you because it's necessary to understand these things. You know what? Very soon Christ is going to come. We don't know when. We keep saying that. We don't know when. You know, and we know that he's coming back to reward every man according to their deeds on earth here. No, but if you're not growing and you're not developing and you're not living the life expected, then what is it there as evidence that you are going to stand before Christ and to you know testify about, about or what is he going to see that you will need to be rewarded of? Yeah, you can say you are a child of God. You can say I believe in Christ, and that's the point. But I encourage you, it is beyond, it's just just that. Hallelujah. So today I encourage you the benefits of the word of God, you know, here is growth, our spiritual growth. It's necessary you don't stay where you are, but develop. Illustration, I've just already made mention of that illustration as in living things, the expectation of growth from infancy to adulthood. You know, 
you know, Paul said that when I was a child, I did things as a child. But now that I'm grown up, what? How to do things as an adult. So, yes, in your work with God, in your journey with God, in your follow-up with God, and to say you are a disciple of Christ, learning every day is expected. It's expected that what? You grow. It's expected you gain insight, gain understanding. And to the extent you're able to apply the corresponding wisdom, you know, to do what God expects of you. And you know what? That grace of God is sufficient for you, my brother, my dear sister. You can live this life because according to his divine power has he given unto us all things that pertain to such life of godliness. You know, whatever we, you and I do need of in our lives, that we can grow, grow in our love for the things of God, grow in understanding, grow in faith, you know, grow in witnessing, you know, grow in, in how to handle temptation, grow in, think about all the issues of life and think about all the positive things of life that God expects us to do. You know, that when we know the word of God, how we can grow. I'm encouraging you. Once again, I say what I'm encouraging you. That it's expected of you. So let that word of God dwell in you richly. Let the word of God that we're talking about dwell in you richly. As authentic believers of Jesus Christ, we have been saved, as already said. And we have been chosen. You know, so we have been saved and been chosen of Christ to conform to the image of Christ. That is what we have been, you know, brought to. Before we were even born, the word of God said that, he had predestined us, that as saved, you know, we will be conforming to who? To the Son of God, you know, to Jesus Christ, to the image of His Son. You know, let's look at that scripture. For, he said, for whom He foreknew, for whom He foreknew, He also foreordained to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. I mean, like I said, the first, you know, the preceding scripture says, and we know that to them that love God, all things work together for good, even to them that are called according to his purpose. But the verse 29 is what I was kind of referring to, which is, For whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. So are we looking at, what are we looking at here? The fact that God had called us and chosen us, but that what? For, he had foreordained that we will be all conformed to the image of his son. Image of his son. Other translation put it this way. Other translation put it this way. You know, uh, for whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, brethren, the point we are looking up here as mentioning the need for our development in Christ is understanding the fact that what? You know, we are called to conform. So we are not just saved, but having been saved, we are also being saved in a way that what? Our life is conformed to the image of Christ. Now, when we talk about the image of Christ, it means a lot of the need for that understanding. The Word of God is a source of our spiritual growth. As we have been saying, you know, as infants, it's as milk, and thereby growing with a solid food, just as our Lord Jesus Christ emphasized, I've already mentioned about Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, when he mentioned, man shall not what? Live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So as believers in Christ, you are called to maturity in Christ. In all what? Aspects. In all aspects. As believers in Christ, we are called to maturity. It's not just in one thing. Obviously, in our salvation. You know, so we mentioned about what? As husbands, as children, as women, young, whatever it is, we have to grow. There is a principle. There is a standard. There is a way of life that we are all supposed to work, supposed to be growing. Hallelujah. Why we have to sort growth from the word of God, you know, to become mature, you know, is as becoming as what? As the father is. When we look into another scripture in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, we can read about the fact that the Bible says what? You know, we ought to be what? Perfect as our father in heaven is what? Perfect. So let's look at that scripture. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. I'm sure you have your Bible with you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And what does it say then? It reads, verse 48 reads, it says, Ye therefore shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Ye therefore shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, I mean, this is what's mentioned this, you know, and the need for us as to understanding that when we say we are conformed to the image of His dear Son, we should not look at the fact that we are just doing things anyhow. I mean, I always say that we are aiming at living a life of what, to, uh, of, of what maturity towards what perfection. 
everything that you are to do in Christ, the word of God is encouraging you to be just as what? As Christ. So the Bible teaches us that if we are conforming to the image of his dear son, then the idea of what? We being what? We being, or we aiming at what? Perfection. Perfection. And that makes it very important of you and I looking at the importance of analyzing what scripture has to bring us to. Hallelujah. It's really important to understand the need for your life of growth in Christ. You know, and when you read the Bible, you know, uh, the Bible talks about this in Hebrews. Hebrews, let's look at another scripture in Hebrews chapter 5. When you look at this scripture in Hebrews chapter 5, it tells about how, you know, it was pointing out to these belie uh, believers as to what they're supposed to have come to at the point of their life. And unfortunately, it's as if they were still living as young believers. So Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 5, let's read from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Chapter 5, verse 11. And I read, it says, of whom we have many things to say. I want to read another translation than the one I have. Okay, let's go for this one. Of whom we have many things to say and heart of interpretation, seeing you are become dull of hearing. For when by reason of the time you ought to be teachers, you have need again that someone teach you the rudiments of the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of solid food. For every one that partaketh of milk is without experience of the word of righteousness for he is a babe but solid food is for full-grown men even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to the same good and evil well we are looking at what how we can source you know growth you know from the Word of God and you can see from here you know we look earlier on to do with infants you know believer in Christ if you like you know where he obviously is craving for milk or we have to live by milk because of where we are in terms of our understanding but you, in that development process of God, is expected on a daily basis, getting yourself, you know, of the lifestyle of studying the Word of God, reading the Word of God, meditating upon the Word of God. You know, you are able to uh, gain insight, gain the understanding that brings you to the place of maturity. And this scripture says that by this time, you ought to you are be what? Being teachers. Being teachers. Isn't it sad that there are so many of us in the church today who for so many years, you know, have been in the church but have never what grown we are still the same people we are still talking about the same thing that we were introduced to when we became believers we have never moved from one if you talk about this people don't seem to have a side of it you know the bible is talking about the need for you to what, grow and begin to feed on the solid food you know to be able to become teachers when talking about a teacher i always say that a teacher is not only what they say a teacher is about what of the days of their lifestyle when I say something, as we're talking right now about the Word of God, I couldn't just, just talk about the importance of the Word of God and I'm not reading the Word of God or not living according to the Word of God because anybody can say something. There are people who can quote scriptures really good from Genesis to, to Revelation. You know, they are very good at it. But then again, you look at their lives and unfortunately, they are not actually living as the Word of God is stating or they are even, you know, quoting. This is not what God is expecting about. The Bible talks about we not being what? Hearers only deceiving ourselves, but being what doers. Not everybody who says Lord, but those who what do. So it is very important that you aim, you know, you know, you aim, obviously, as we said earlier on, aim at this perfected life that God is expecting you to walk in. Aim at this life of yours to become what? A teacher. Every day of our life is supposed to be expressing that lifestyle of teacher. Because then again, we talk about we're going to the world what? to preach the gospel. And for me, when I hear the word of God, go into the world and make disciples. It tells me about the fact that God has given us the grace, the ability from our lifestyle. Wherever we have been, you know, we are able to show from our lives, to teach, to demonstrate the truth of God. So it's important that you will what, grow, you will mature in these very things that is expected of you. So today I'm encouraging you and myself that wherever you are in the things of God, it's good to be called a child of God, but it's not just enough, you know, just to say I'm a child of God because I've given my life to Christ or I received this into my heart. But it's important that what you see the you see that importance of the word of God. You what do we say? You study it, you read it, you meditate on it, and what you obviously walk in the total obedience of whatever the word of God is telling you to do in all aspects of your life, in all aspects of life, because there are all the answers, all the solutions, there are all the instructions 
There are all the corrections. There are all the doctrine you expect to know of, you know, written in the Word of God, which enable you to show forth the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope this is kind of, um, you know, challenging you today and making you to see why you can go beyond where you are. And you know what? You can. Hallelujah. I want you to believe today that, you know, wherever you are in the things of God, God expects you and God has made a provision. You know, there is everything available to you to go beyond this place. It's a benefit. The Word of God has this that source for you. He has that provision for you. We have been saying about what the benefit of the Word of God. Having spoke about salvation, having spoke about faith, we are talking about now what? Of, of, of the what? Of spiritual growth. Because your life must be every, must have every clear evidence of the fact that you are growing. You don't want to live with somebody. I mean, look at it in living our natural realm. When a child is born, you know, and then, you know, for, year, for, for, for obviously days, weeks, months goes by, and then years, and the child, you know, still seems to be what? Acting. You know, I mean, even at the point of maybe five years, six years, you expect certain, you know, indication that there's what is expected of a five-year-old child, you know, of a certain behavior to be evident. And then you're not seeing that. What, do you, what, 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 what makes you look at that person's like You realize something is not right. Something is not right. Either that child is not what? Being fed or not being fed well. Either the child is not being fed with the necessary nutrients. And that's why we should also be just talking about the word of God. We are talking about this word of God. This uncompromised word of God. We're not talking about anything any man is going to tell you. Not everybody is going to quote you some scriptures and we interpret it right. We are talking about what the Bible is actually stating. And the true interpretation by the grace of God and the help of the Holy Spirit was supposed to be the true, you know, accurate interpretation of the Word of God. You know, when you read and you, 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 you kind of conform into that direction of life, you are able to see your life of development. So when you see a child like that, certainly you will get concerned. And I think that you should begin to see that this is not supposed to be you. Don't be seen. I mean, if you have to analyze your life today, don't be seen as 10 years of your relationship with God, nothing has happened. You know, no, you should be what? You should be growing. There should be every evidence that as a child would have come to five years, you would have, you would have seen the evidence of crawling, walking, running, and other things. The same way we are supposed to be seeing ourselves in the spiritual development of our lives, you know, in that process. Hallelujah. I hope you are taking note of this, brother and sister, because I know God has made everything possible. He, God want to use us. God want to use us. God want us to be more productive. God want us to be fruitful. You've got to always remember the issue of growth you know, it's necessary. It's necessary because it is up to that point that we're able to what, to produce, you know, to be what? To be effective, to be fruitful. And I'm going to maybe today look at something to, uh, okay, get into wrap up what we're looking at also in the idea of John chapter 15. John chapter 15, you know that. Let's look at that scripture and make you see the importance of the idea of, you know, we get into a place of maturity. John chapter 15. I like that. And these are Jesus' own words. Amen? Jesus' own words. He was talking about him being the, the vine. So let's look at it. John chapter 15. I'm going to read from verse 1. And see why we are still emphasizing and talking about the importance of the word of God and the benefit that we do receive as a result of what? Of growth. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. This is Jesus Christ himself speaking. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh what? Away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he cleanseth it. That it may bear more fruit. Already ye are clean because of the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. So neither can you except abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For apart from me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and so shall ye be my disciples. Even as the Father hath loved me, I also have loved you. Abide ye in my love. If ye keep my commandment, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment, 
and abide in his love. And you can go on to look at that old chapter of John chapter 15. But here we can, we can tell clearly Jesus was making a point of the fact that we ought to be what? Fruitful. But only able to do so because we are abiding in him. He is a vine. We are the branches. Christ is the vine. We are the branches. And he explained that if we are connected with Christ, if you are connected to Christ, certainly, that is said, if you abide in the word of God, because you know Christ is the word of God. And if you abide in him, which is Christ, then certainly the necessary nutrient for your development, for your growth, would be there, would be available. So you'll be able to develop and mature and to do what? To produce fruit. That's what it's speaking of here. So you can see that as our lives of, you know, proving a relationship with God, we've got to be what? Fruitful. We've got to be mature to be fruitful. We've got to be in this very place where we are productive. There's nobody in the things of God or in relationship with God that is meant to be fruitless. Everything of our lives was spoken of what? That which shows for the glory of God as fruitfulness. And here it says that if you do so, if you are connected to me and you are not being fruitful, then you are cut off. So you can see the seriousness of our life of maturity, our growth in him. Now that we are connected with him, we are the branch of Christ, it's important that we do what? We are connected with Christ, we source our necessary nutrient for our growth in him. And again, what do we say? The word of God, the benefit. You know, isn't that wonderful for us today, children of God, to see the fact that God has given his word to help us to gain necessary nutrient for every aspect of our stability, our maturity, our effectiveness, our fruitfulness, our productivity, you know, in him. It's all there. It's all there, but can be found in the word of God. So I encourage you, now you have confidence and or long to come, now that you know that you've been, you know, hang on with Christ and you are living <coughs> with your faith in him, then look at to this aspect of the fact that you need to what, you know, connected with him and you need to do everything to prove that. Let's look at one or two examples and then we will pray here and uh, we will look at another week. You know, when you look into the issue of uh, maturity, I found out that in the Bible, you know, people such as Sam, you know, were all in the process of growth. There was a need for them to grow. There should be an evidence of our life that we are what, growing. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. This is in the, obviously Old Testament and we look at this story. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. And I read. What does it say there? It says, and the child Samuel, the word is what? Grew on and increased in the favor both with Jehovah and also with men. I mean, can it be said about you? You know, can it be said about you to see the need for your life of development, of growth, to grow on and increase in favor both with God, Jehovah, and also with men? I mean, this is spoken of a person that God had called and chosen to represent, you know, his kingdom work. You know, and you are also called and chosen to represent the kingdom word of God, which as a disciple of Christ, we ought to all be considered as such. You know, and if you look even to the life of Jesus Christ, in fact, John the Baptist, let's look at John the Baptist as another example. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. Again, you see the aspect of the need for us what? To grow. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. And this pointing out some examples of the need for you to see how important it is for us to have our life developed. You know, in terms of growth. Luke chapter 1. And uh, it reads here in verse 80. John the Baptist is an example. He said, and the child grew. This is talking about John the Baptist. You know, and was strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his, of his showing unto Israel. Again, I'm just making us to just see the word grow in the usage of these lives. In the sense of uh, how beneficial it is in their relationship with God or as to the aspect of how <coughs> God was going to use them or using them. And Jesus Christ also was a typical, I and mean, you know about that. Jesus Christ himself. And if Jesus Christ is spoken of him as growing, he didn't he didn't need to because he's God. But then again, we look from scriptures in Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Let's look at that example there. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And this is about Jesus. I just wanted just to have a, a few examples here just to help us. Luke chapter 2, verse 40, and maybe 52. The 40 says, And the child grew, again, you can see that. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. This is talking in this case about Jesus. And the child grew and was strong, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now we are talking about Jesus himself in this very 
in this respect. The previous one was about John the Baptist. Now verse 52 also has something to say. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and men. Now what are we looking at the pointer? The need for you to grow. The need for you to grow in stature. The need for you to grow in favor. The need for you to grow in understanding of the things of God. Paul was a, 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 an example. So there are a lot of you know, references to do with people who having come into the, 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 the sphere of what God reigns, that their lives you know, were directed to the need for them to grow. But we are talking about this as what well, the benefits. The benefit that we get what in God. And I hope it's the case with you today. Everything that we are saying today is just pointing out the fact that we are to grow, but the word of God is there and is there as a benefit for us what to, to become such. Hallelujah. I hope it's the case with you. If you have time, I would like to recommend these scriptures to you. That's Acts chapter 9, verse 22. You can put it down and then look into a further study regarding Paul. This was talking about Paul and the idea of growth. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 26 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 26 to 27. Then possibly the last but not the least, Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. I'm giving us some kind of homework to do. Hallelujah. You know, I hope every time we have the opportunity to come here and then we, you know, read the word of God, you are able to go back. As you rightly know, you know, these things are already and record it. You can get it. Apart from this being live broadcast, you can also go to YouTube and be able to have the time to play and replay and to check and see the things that we are being said here are in line with the Word of God and are exactly what we are referring to. The scriptures mentioned here, I want to repeat it, is according to Paul, example, is Acts chapter 9, verse 22. Acts chapter 9, verse 22. Just in case I might have said it too fast. And then the other one is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 26 and 27. 26 and 27. Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. It looks like we haven't done this before where we are giving some kind of warm way. But it's good. Always good when we have had this opportunity to come together, look into the word of God for us to go back and then as I said earlier on, to, you know, steady feather to apply to our lives hallelujah isn't god wonderful you know that he had saved us he had you know given the son jesus christ to us who is the word of god you know and made the word of god to under and make us see the importance of it as we have already been saying the word of god is what the manual for life for you the believer the bible is a manual for life if there's any way you are going to be able to live right if there's any way you're going to live effectively as a true believer of Christ, we normally refer to as an authentic believer of Christ. Is there any way you are going to shine? You know, the Bible says we should let our light so shine before men. You know, that may see our good works and give glory to the Father, our Father who is in heaven. Matthew five sixteen. You know, is there any way we're going to become the salt of the earth? You know, uh, the light of the world. Then it's going to be the fact that we have adhered to the Word of God and we have understood the Word of God. We have walked in the total obedience of the Word of God. And that we are literally living according to what they expect of us. It's my prayer that today, if there's anything at all you should not forget about, is to see how important the Word of God is and the benefit it has in order for your spiritual growth. Don't stay wherever you are, wherever you are, however mature you might, have, you might think you are in the things of God. You will never, you have never arrived here because until Christ shows up, there is still the Word of God there to encourage us, to strengthen us, to take us beyond wherever we are. So I trust that this is you. This is you. And before we go, as usually we do, you have heard us, maybe you are not a Christian, wherever you are. You have never given your life to Christ. Again, the word of God is what we are we are sharing. John <coughs> chapter 3. I usually don't want to go to so many other scriptures, but John chapter 3, the Bible talks about obviously acts that there's no name given unto us, or we should believe the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. But John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, if you're this person that wants to give your life to Christ, I want to encourage you. I'm going to pray a prayer now and you can follow me. And I also want to encourage you, the believer, you who already know Christ. Please, this is a very important time for us to go into the world to tell our brothers, to tell our sisters, to tell our friends who, know the, who do not know the Lord. How God loves them. Let this scripture be, you know, understood in their lives. That they will turn their life to God because God 
love every one of us. God cares for every one of us. And God wants to see that every one of us come to a place of our repentance and be part of his kingdom. So I, I encourage you, and I hope that it will be something you'll be doing today, this week, for the rest of the month, and even for the rest of your life. So let us pray, you who want to give your life to Christ. And you, if you are a believer, we just want to pray. You want to pray that prayer that you will become that person growing from today. Today, make it a commitment. Make it a commitment. If your level of maturity in Christ is five, you want to go six, seven, eight, whatever it's supposed to be about, wherever you are. You know, when you see your life and you look at the word of God and how it's at the step of your life of maturity, you want to aim at what? Growing and maturing. And that means a lot. That means reading the word of God daily. That means meditating on it. That means studying. That means participating in the word of Christ like this, sharing the word of God. You don't know where, you know, the Bible of God is taught. You want to be a part of it. So let us pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for today, giving us this opportunity and the privilege to come to your presence where we can hear the word of God. We know it's not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for enabling us to communicate and to receive your word. We pray that even as we have looked into the word, especially the fact that the word of God is powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, it is active, it is living. We pray that our hearts, O oh God, is prepared to receive this word of God. Not only now, but the days of our lives. We are committing our lives to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will lead us we will direct us, Holy Spirit. You will guide us. You will, you will continue to teach us beyond where we have even looked at this very day. We thank you so much for giving us a privilege as it is. That even in our own time, we'll be able to also open our Bible. Your presence shall be filled, Holy Spirit. You will be there to teach and equip us. But we know that you are the great teacher given unto us now. Even to develop our lives. We are grateful to today what you have brought into our understanding. The importance and the benefit of the word of God for our spiritual growth. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. And now for you, the believer, we want to pray this prayer. And for you, the one that wants to give your life to Christ, we want to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for hearing your word, especially the verse 16 of John chapter 3, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to give my life to you. I want to turn away from my sinful ways. I want to become your child. I open my heart and I pray that forgive me of all my sins. Let your blood cleanse me from all my sinful nature. From my life of the past, make me a new person and enable your Holy Spirit to lead me, direct me. I receive you into my heart today. And that's why I confess you. I confess you, Lord Jesus you to be indeed my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 You want to say in support of those that have given their life to Christ. And if you are this man woman that have given your life to Christ, again, we say that always, in case of any need for your continued development in the things of God, visit our site or contact us and we will do everything possible, you know, to share with you what will enable you to become this developed man and woman of God. Hallelujah. Thank God that today you have been with us, wherever you are. And we pray that anybody that is not well in, your, in the body, we thank God for the healing power of His to touch you. The Bible said by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. We pray God's healing to touch your body from the top of the, your head to the sole of your feet. We declare the healing power of God to heal you and to make you strong. And anybody who might be going through any emotional issues of life, anybody who might be going through the physical need of life, Financially, we know God said, uh, Paul has said that he, God will supply all our needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We pray that indeed the Lord will be your shepherd and that he will take care of you. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers and meeting the need of even your son and your daughter now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> thank God that you have been with us and uh, we have had this opportunity. Next week, we're going to be here once again. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Who else can take the place of our Lord? None other. Nobody. And indeed, this is how the song, this is what the song declares. You are my everything. I hope you will see God as such in your life, your walk, your journey with Him. See Him as you rise up from bed, as you go uh, to work. Whatever you're doing, know that the Lord God is with you. He said He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Have a wonderful week. We'll look forward again. We'll see you on this, our coming next Sunday broadcast. God bless you. Be what God wanted to be. Grow beyond the level that you are in, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.
Amen.